Hello there, everybody, and welcome uh, to the Sunfall Cycle. Whoop. We're back. Although I can't. Chad, you just, oh. you just missed Jesse doing the most pained countdown in front of the I, camera. I just His realized. His hands do not work. I just realized I can do all to, and then this, it falls apart. I can't, like, yeah. these two fell apart. There's a, because your ring finger's tendon is connected to your middle finger and your pinky. The ring front end is connected. Ah, this one works. Middle finger pinky. That you know what? I'm not you have to you have to work that muscle. Yeah, like it's, this one. This even one, then, you go. You'll never be able to raise one, your ring by ring. Works. Yes, your pinky can be raised. You can. You'll never be able to raise your ring finger as high as you can your pinky or your middle. My left hand. It's just not story of my life. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. The show where we talk about. Why one and, hand is stronger than the other? That's weird. Anyway, <laughs> here we There's are. There's a lot more mobility in those fingers. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, boy, I'm really excited to figure out why bronze needs to be reoriented here. Hold on, I'll figure it out. Meanwhile, talk amongst yourselves. Have fun. Welcome to the show, everyone. All right, and now that now, now that bronze is here, while I have the opportunity to launch this topic. Can we talk about fucking Returnal? <laughs> oh my gosh. Returnal? Have you played it, Bronze? I have. I haven't had time to like really sit in with it as long as I want to, but I have played it for like at least three or four hours. How far have you gotten? Did you beat the far? first boss? No. Who? Who? So really, really, you're Wait, where no, I, I am. I think I found the boss, but then died. And yeah. then couldn't find him again. I've been, I don't know, my loops have been weird. Like, I've gotten simultaneously really far, but also haven't, haven't found, found the boss again. But the first time I found the boss, like, in, like, the fourth room. Wow. If that as crazy as it is. I don't know how the map works. I think it's technically possible. I'm sure there's some sort of limitation on, like, how many rooms it has to go through before it, before it like opens the door to the boss room but like if you just go straight through all of the the rectangle doorways i'm sure you can get there very quickly yeah i think i did it by accident because i just went in a room and was like what's that oh now i'm dead <laughs> <laughs> it just got deleted it was crazy yeah. that's that's the returnal experience i like it a lot i i am i'm deep deep into the returnal you guys really tried like to sell eric on this very too. mixed reviews on it though so um, I haven't seen too much uh, criticism of the game itself. I have seen a lot of conversation about the choice that they made to not have saving uh, in the middle of a run. And that in combination with the length of the runs, like you can spend two or three hours if you're careful, like doing a run before you finally die. If you can't save, then like, you know, players with busier lives or who are trying to share their PlayStation with other members of their households, like, will just lose all of that progress, which can be really frustrating in a game like Returnal that's so skill-based and challenging. I've also seen some criticism of Returnal um, on the basis of, like, how challenging it is. It has once again kicked off the great game design difficulty discourse discussion. Game design difficulty discourse discussion. Um, and you know, like I, uh, I, my personal feelings. I know this is dangerous to to talk about, so don't don't narc me on this chat. You have my personal, personal feelings. My personal feelings. I'm already on going difficulty. to Twitter right now. <laughs> my personal feelings and difficulty is, um, as a designer, you want every player in the game to have the level of difficulty that you intend for the game. But each player is a unique person with different abilities to approach the game and different like tolerances for the difficulty of the game. And so adding difficulty settings, adding accessibility modes especially, is a way of making sure that every player can meet the game at the difficulty that you intend. Um, and much like Control, which also didn't have difficulty modes at the start, I don't know if they, they added them later, uh, Returnal chose not to. I'm loving it, but I can absolutely see why it doesn't work for some people as a consequence. Uh, so that's my that's my design soapbox about Returnal. My I haven't played it, 
but my only my only concern is that I just don't know how far a bullet hell can capture my attention. Right? There's there's that, that design space is not exactly like infinite. Say do like you, do you like play the spire hell game? Is, right? Not really. No. Uh, I, 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 I grew up it on won't them. hold your there attention was, very much. I grew up on them. There is, I have to look it up. I think it's called Raptor. Yeah, uh, it's an old uh, PC ROM game that came yep. in like a CD from yep. like, you know, and you're a little fighter jet. Yep. Like I love that shit, but the not not rolled. anymore. Yeah, I cannot believe you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure I played the shit out of that game when I was a kid. Raptor. Call of the Shadows, maybe. Call yeah. of the Shadows. Yeah, I was I absolutely had this game when I was a kid. My my um grandparents who lived in California when I lived in Virginia uh mailed this to me on like a, a pack of like six floppy disks when I was like nine years old. It came out in nineteen ninety four, so that would have been when I was yeah. nine. And I played this shit out of it. That game ruled. I loved it. Yeah. That was my first bullet hell. Yeah. So like I I, I feel for them. But I don't know at this at this point in my life, I'm not sure I feel the same. I don't know what it is. Returnal just like it grabbed me by the heart and like it's just pulling me along. I'm gonna get off of this show at eleven PM tonight. I'm gonna go play Returnal until one AM. Is the lore good? Like are you are you enjoying like the aliens like scanning stuff? Is it So like um my 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 elevator pitch for Returnal is um it's a third person shooter roguelike bullet hell game that plays a bit like doom eternal in terms of like the 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 arenas and the level of difficulty and the different tools at your disposal it's not quite as like rhythm based as doom eternal is but that's kind of like that'll get you in the ballpark atmospherically it's as if they crossed alien and aliens covenant with um annihilation and then wrapped the whole thing yeah and then wrapped the whole thing in the genre of the haunted house as a conceit so like alien is a haunted house movie if you look at like the genre of haunted houses it's about like a space and belonging to the space and your relationship with the space and what it means for you metaphorically so like the haunting of hill house alien like god um there's another really fantastic haunted house show that i watched when i was young so like all of this stuff is like super duper my jam so I love it. Um, if those things sound like your jam, then you you might enjoy that as well. Uh, but you will have to fight your way through a very challenging bullet hell third person shooter on the way there. Yeah. Well, the, the graphics, I I can't say anything bad about the game. Anything I've ever seen about it, it looks amazing. I'm just I'm just afraid that I I'm only gonna get like maybe like ten to thirty hours out out of it, which. You know, to be fair, that's perfectly valid for a game. That's a crazy like, statement. I want to, I want you to yeah. know that. I'm afraid yeah. I'm only going to get 10 to 30 hours out of it is like crazy. It's well, a, my, what you said is a crazy thing. My favorite games I have like thousands of hours in because they're like xcom like, you know, reset, like build po up stuff, right? Like I love games that I, th those are the games that capture my attention the most. So that's why. So like when I play smaller games, I either want something that I can be like, very discrete chunks of time in and out play that are like 20 minutes long. Um, or, or I want something that will just hold my attention for the rest of my life. Also last, last praise for Returnal before we go into the show, uh, the haptics on the controller. Yeah. Oh my God, Jesse, you know what I'm talking about. I do look, it's, it's, it's like, uh, I'm just terrible at it, Steven. I'm <laughs> bad at the game. <laughs> like, I'm just not good. That's fair. People are like, Jesse, why don't you stream it? I was like, because I don't want to be yelled at for four hours. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm good. I'm fine. I'll play it on my own time. I, I feel bad at Returnal. Returnal makes me feel bad at it, even though I've gotten very far, significantly, significantly deep into the game. Uh, if you want any tips, I can hit you up, but... Yeah, I just I know the feel. I'll I'll get it. I just suck. Like, it's one of those things where even when I play Dark Souls, I'm like, I don't need to be reminded I'm bad at video games all the time. So, well, I I want to I want to go back to something Steven said about haunted houses. Yeah. Okay. Are dungeons and Dungeons and Dragons haunted houses? 
Not necessarily. They could be. The the fall of the house of Dude is a haunted house. <clears throat> sure. Is is a haunted house like a construct, not just a literal house, but like the idea yeah. of a yeah, space, yeah. Right? It's like, like a construct, so, man. Of so like, is, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, lens. yeah. Hang on, fictionally, it's a narrative lens, and psychologically, the haunted house you... is like a, it's like a construct, so like, man. The conventional dungeon in Dungeons and Dragons is like rooted in colonialism. Here we go. <laughs> Of like, here is a strange, hostile culture. Here's a strange and supposedly hostile culture that we go in in order to like take all of the treasure and bring it back and make it safe for our own consumption. So like, you know, like people who talk about colonialism and Dungeons and Dragons, they've got a lot of weight on their side. Um, you can do things with Dungeons and Dragons that are not colonialist. I would like to hope that the Sunfall Cycle falls under that umbrella. Um, I'm but so like sorry. A... No, Sarek is a colonizer for sure. For sure. That, that that is absolutely true. Like that's that's the, like the lens that Sarek is approaching his experience for in Empire sure. From. Um, <laughs> but like uh, the haunted house is specifically like a place. It doesn't have to be a house, but it is some kind of location where the location itself is a character and also has some sort of key relationship with the main character who's um it's like their, their conflict is not just about the events that happen but also about their relationship to the space and the place so like the the haunting of hill house when the woman goes back there that's what it was the haunting of hill house yeah yeah when so, the woman goes back there it's not just about the house and the stuff that happens in the house but like her relationship to the house and her belonging to the house the same thing with ripley and the space station the is it the Nostromo in, in yeah, Alien? Nostromo. Yeah, it's like, it's her place of work, it's her home, like the space is a character and her relationship to it is a character. And then that question of like, can you reconcile your relationship with the space? Or do you do you successfully break from the space that is toxic and, and horrible for you? Do you like sink in and realize that like this toxic, horrible place is actually the comfortable place for you, so you're staying here forever? Like. I love haunted houses. <laughs> yeah. No, the the personal relationship then that that definitely seems like the part that's missing from a lot of like dungeon crawling. Yes. Right? The the the, the the and then furthermore, I guess the reflection of when you spend your time in a place that is hostile to you and like, you know, literally and and metaphysically hostile. Like do you feel the same way when you go back to town? Yep. Right? And like that sort of relationship is sort of what you're coming from? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so like and yeah, since that doesn't really get explored that much, yeah, okay, okay, I'm following, I'm following along, yeah. and that's also why then House of Duday works because you obviously we have Froge Duday, yeah, like we have you know we have the characters of Duday where there is a personal contextualized experience. To, okay, 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 cool, 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 yeah. cool, cool, yeah. cool, 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 cool. And well, like we can go into like it's not it's not um, Stretch's personal relationship with the house that causes the toxicity of the house, but actually like the entire structure of the pawn and patron relationship and like what it means to be a patron and or a noble in this world where like people who live at the level of pawns exist and whatever social commentary it's just a fun game that we play together it doesn't mean anything what the hell are you talking about i'm talking about my other game anyway let's play some D. &D. sorry i was advocating for myself in an email so but you have my full attention now i love that you are advocating for yourself <laughs> in an email because you deserve to be advocated for in an email and if anybody's gonna do it it's gonna be you i love that you chose to advocate during their conversation that really went nowhere and then when he's like let's play D, &D you return to a conversation which is something well, i wish i had the people i, I could do, do. Like, something i wish i could do but i gotta to pretend this, to be like, interested smooth brain thing where they think because I'm a streamer, this is all I've ever done and I have no other life skills. And they use it to like be very Take advantage of you and talk down to you and be like, throw you in the woods and you wouldn't survive because all you've ever done Who is emailed play games. you I'm that. Like, yes, Who? you're right. I came out of my mom's vagina and just was on Twitch. On Twitch. <laughs> Like, <laughs> who is baby like, such a the lack of the smooth brainness? It like, of course, I had to shut this shit down because you're just sitting there. And you're like, 
Do you think I did nothing before this? I have uh, obviously a person can't be multi nuanced, right? Nerds can't have any skills other than playing games. No, no, no. We don't do anything, Britt. We just all you do is eat hot chip and play Slay the Spire. And if I threw you in the woods, you'd die. <laughs> I would actually, I would, I would, I would like to know the number of people, who, a number of streamers, like partner streamers Gather. with more than a thousand viewers who actually have had a job in a professional. Time out, environment. time out, time out, time out. I think there's a whole other issue here we're not talking about. Time out. If oh, you I'm threw just... most people into the woods, they would die. Like just yeah, anyone. But if you... if you threw bronze specifically into the woods, she would thrive. She would survive. Like that's the problem. She wouldn't just survive. She would fucking thrive. Which I is just like come so the what a weird queen threat. of the woods and leave the, the weird trees threat. in an assault on your like stone-based institutions, <laughs> tear them down, salt of the earth, and then like turn your corpse into her chalice. Your yeah, skull, but like chalice, most skull, people chalice. would die in the woods, Stephen. The <laughs> Ever, if you threw anyone, most, like 99% of the world's population would die if they're thrown into the woods they did not recognize. I hope you emailed back and just said, no, you'd die if I threw you in the woods. It is uh, you who would be the I one who dies. She, she emailed them back with said, just a link, twitch.tv slash Jesse Cox for my response. I, I wrote, the lack of logic in this email is astounding. You made assumptions out of sheer ignorance. Well, bro. You made a whole complete assumption about my character based off of a few choice interactions in my chat. You don't know me. You don't know my life. You don't know anything about me. Next time, fuck off quietly and save the email rant for your diary. There was like there was that was like, that was like a flow. That was like a like. Dude, that was beat poetry. You need to perform that on that Friday night. At a coffee I'm just getting it called the bully now. You know. We should just be, be here like. She told me to fuck off and save my rant for my for my diary. <laughs> I just, so I just mean. why why not just message you like if I threw you in a ocean full of sharks you die. Most people would. Like if I threw you in a wood chipper you would be murdered. Yeah, most people. Like what a crazy thing to say. <laughs> Look, point is, like not if I dropped wrong. you off in a section of town you didn't know you'd get lost. You big idiot. <laughs> Like, what? What a ridiculous statement. If I threw you in the woods, the woods? People die in the woods all the time. I bet you wouldn't last a minute on the surface of the sun, Jesse Cox. I bet if I dropped you off in space with no spacesuit, you would die. You big dummy. You stupid streamer. Oh, my God. This person really... I just feel like it's like also just very like toxic in the sense that like they only measure someone's value in terms of their ability to like I think they went on this whole rant about building things and yep, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was course. like okay like so with your hands. every person that can do that should just kill themselves right like <laughs> all right cottage core zealots what yep. what okay. century is this email coming from uh, cottage core <laughs> Cottage core is my new favorite thing I've ever heard. Yeah, what? it's basically being like a cottage core Nazi is like what that is, right? Cottage core. There's like there's like this this uh certain like media driven publicized brand of conservatism. I don't mean this as an attack. I'm just he identifying does. a he pattern does. that we have. It's okay if he you does. do. I don't mean it as an attack, <laughs> even though it clearly is. It's not he intended does. as an attack here. Um, that that like building things with your hands is the only valuable skill and like blue collar workers like physical laborers are the important labor and a lot of conservative politician like talking points and targets target that fantasy of like blue collar labor is the important labor coal miners and steel workers and like manufacturers and things like that um, and the the political and workforce climate of the United States has changed dramatically since the time that that was true. It feels incredibly strange to keep uh, hanging on to that as the thing that that creates it's actually value. a very privileged Steven. position to take. Yeah, it's Steven, like are you list in nature too? <laughs> wait, are you are you telling me that some random farmer in Iowa in a diner is not the representative person in America? of the American heartlands? Well. And then well, it's boy. actually like a 38-year-old single mom who's like, 
living in uh in like LA? And are you really? All you know, for me, it's like por qué no los dos. Like, why can't we? <laughs> Not call these people unskilled laborers yeah. and put them down because, like, essential workers, un- unskilled laborers, they hold everything up. Why can't we have that and also COVID not shit that. on people who sit at their desk for a living? Yeah, absolutely. Well, my question is he emailing every single person that's on the internet? Is he emailing everybody about not using their hands? Uh, well, no. How is he picking was, the choosing? Do you want to know the context? the really slutty story? ones? Is that, are those He's, the ones? Okay, He's so not going to email Jesse because we've already seen that Jesse. Can I use his roasted hand. him in my chat and he felt a certain way about it. Here's the context of the roast I was talking about language and the beauty and nuance of language. And I was talking about Hindi and Punjabi. And someone else came in and said, What are your feelings about the, horri- the horrific destitution in India? And I was like, During AAPI month, you're going to come in here while I'm talking about India and just be like, what about the poor people? Like, that's like somebody saying, I'm from LA and being like, what about Skid Row? Like, why is this the first place your brain goes? And this other person, this boomer, showed up and was like, well, I could, like, I'm not, I don't agree with them. But he did this like three or four times for like a bunch of different people that we like banned or talked about and was like, I just try to see things from their point of view. I was like, yeah, I don't care. He's like, well, you need to understand people. I was like, no, I don't. I don't care if, if the, the reason behind someone doing something, if the end result is the same, you know? I was like, I could sit there and reason with someone if they're going to double down. You sitting here saying, like, well, maybe they're from a small town or maybe, like, I was like, the devil already has tons of ag- advocates on retainer. He doesn't need you. I don't know how much he's paying you. And his dude was super triggered about it. Like, he was just, like, really upset. Sounds he about was, white. Like, well, you know, like, my opinion of you has changed. I was like, I'm going to be totally honest. Mm-hmm. I don't care about your opinion of me. I only care about the opinion of people I respect. And that, that was, that's what killed him. I'm not, I mean, I'm not joking. That line, he was like, you think you're more important than other people. You're vain. You're so, I was like, but it's, it's my honest opinion. I don't care about the opinion of people I don't respect. If I respect you, yes, your opinion of me matters to you. But really think about it. Think about what I do for a living. If I sat here and took the opinion of every single person on the internet oh. to heart, I don't know what the state of my mental health would be like. You bad. wouldn't be alive, I don't It would be bad. <laughs> Just think, think about it. Here. Think about it for a moment. Like if I sat here and took every Girl. single opinion on the internet, seriously, if it's like someone that I've had a relationship with for a long time or somebody like, like if it was anybody in this, in this cast of people that said, hey, Jasmine, we need to talk. You're very abrasive and very caustic. Yes, their opinion counts to me. But if it's some person that I don't even know, why for me would that to why would they re-examine my whole life? Like, they think you're a narcissist. Like, yeah, what the right? fuck? Yeah. That assumption is narcissistic as hell. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a narcissist. Challenge. You think I should what? care about your opinion? I don't even fucking yeah. know what you look like. Like, I don't know you. I like Random two lines that show up in chat every few, few I don't, days. I don't what? think if I went up to Bronze and said, we need to talk, you're being abrasive, that you'd be like, I appreciate that. You'd be like, Oh, she shut absolutely up. would. Are you no, kidding No, she'd be like, no, shut I up, would. Cox. No, you'd be no, like. No, I would. No. I would first think you're fucking with me. See? Like, See, it, and then but then I have to the write thing. you an email about like, dear bronze. No, so if you're seriously not so if I dropped you in the moon, you would die there. Shut up, Jesse. <laughs> See, that's why. Because it's always a joke. So I would be like, Jesse, that's not real. Jesse, oh, I would fuck. never say you're abrasive. It's because uh, you're caustic. Not. Yeah. Caustic is a good one. We've got to say that. I got called Caustic one. once. Ooh. What? You? A guy I didn't want to date. He said I was Caustic. He told people I was Caustic. <laughs> Can I still call people obtuse? Is that fine? Because I love calling people obtuse. <laughs> I texted him. I was like, it's a good thing that I didn't date you then because I don't think you'd want such a Caustic bitch girlfriend. <laughs> And he was like, I didn't mean to say it came out of context. I was like, no, it's fine. I'm it fucking Caustic. Fuck context. you. This conversation's over. You know how Caustic I am. And I haven't spoken to him since then. So caustic. Amazing. What a caustic response. <laughs> I, I feel Jesse. like I'm way harsher than Bronze. I'm just really a lot quieter about it. <laughs> Bronze is very caring. Like, she's very willing to openly try to make things work with people. You give people tons of chances. I did. I did on Twitter to a total I think stranger. you're very generous. Person. Yeah, because yeah, there's I been mean... a lot of, like, Twitter drama, drama, 
and people keep using that word. And somebody was like, this streamer drama is stupid. I was like, you know what? You're, if you don't have an opinion, you don't have to comment, but like going under someone else's tweet and trying to undermine their feelings of hurt and betrayal, just to dismiss this as drama is, is in very poor taste. And they comment to us that they're like, well, streamers like me that care about their community and actually give a fuck, never get attention, but these shit streamers. I was like, yeah, this isn't about you. And they just blocked me and said I was a bitch. And I was like, this is why I just roast people. I get punished. I get punished. Yeah, I know you, you know do. what you my can't. reflex was? There are two wolves inside of me. And the much bigger, beefier, veinier wolf was like, call him a dumb bitch and keep it moving. <laughs> But then there was another... Evil, and then there was this poor, tiny, evil, starving... Albino wolf that, like, gleams in the moonlight. And she was like, let us use reason and yep. logic. Yep. And then the big, veiny, buff... Why it gotta be veiny? Like, I took... Because he's... It's like a werewolf. he's pumped <laughs> full around. Bronze, bronze is on a roll. Where you, how dare you? Go. Go, Bronze. And then the big, veiny wolf is like, this is why we call it dumb bitch and keep move. And the big, beautiful, golden wolf was like... Yeah, I cannot believe I wasted time on this skid mark of humankind. <laughs> you know? No, that's they don't dude, fight that is such other. an they accurate description. To each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, how do I want to handle this situation right now? What's going to waste the least <laughs> amount of time versus like, what do I think is funny? Which is why I usually end up being like, like sending fucking Tim and Eric gifts to people who harass me online. <laughs> like, all I've got for you is a spaghetti, dude. Like, I don't have anything else. I'm mad, and I'm, I'm like I'm trying to be reasonable. I don't want to choose either. I'm just gonna send you a spaghetti gif and move on with my life. I don't know what else to do. Because <laughs> either way, it's a waste of time. No, it is. We broke Jesse. I just can't believe you all are so willing to follow Bronze into that story that no one's questioning this big ass veiny I'm, wolf. I, because this I wolf is so veiny. I can't, I can't join you on this adventure. You're all lost. I don't understand what you're saying. Inside you, Jesse, that's like ready to just elbow drop somebody? No, my, I got one wolf that's like kind of asleep and another wolf who's like still in <laughs> yeah, line the drive through. True. I that got no wolves. Right. I have zero. My wolves are like, <laughs> I have come a bug. back later, bro. <laughs> you have a pug? <laughs> yeah, I have like one that's really like beady eye across the floor of your soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got one I really, beady eye pug and like... One Boston Terrier, and they're just like two little dudes hanging out together. <laughs> their eyes are both going in different yeah, directions. Their eyes are like all goofy. <laughs> oh, wait, and, oh, and, yeah. Did y'all watch the Mitchells versus the Machines? No. no. It has what a pug whose eyes are going in different directions. It's a super cute movie, and you should definitely watch it. Watch it. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I know. think what it comes from when you get uh, women like get catcalled all the time, and you get hit on, and you basically like start living your life in a way. If you're at a bar, or you're like out grocery shopping, you're literally doing anything, and a man comes up to you, you have to be ready because you don't know what he's gonna do. So you have to be ready to either be polite if he asks you how to get to like the Baskin Robbins, or you have to be ready to tell him to go fuck himself if he's like, hey, I wanna touch your vagina. And you don't know what he's gonna say. You don't fucking know. Every single time that happens, you don't know. So I think a lot of women who go through that end up living their life that way. They were just like, okay. I'm ready to immediately react with either one of these things. We got the wolves, they're ready. One will be necessary and I don't know which, so they're both ready to go at all times. Like, yeah. I don't know if that's the way for you, Bronze, but no, I feel 100%. like No, 100%. You'll sit there and be nice or coddle. You know what? Being overly nice when I was uncomfortable, I almost died. Literally. There was, like, this dude who somehow, I'm, don't ask me how, like, at a college campus, somehow found their way into my car because I could not bring myself to be rude. Yep. Yep. I literally could not bring myself to be rude. And he was like, oh, yeah, like just take me over here. I didn't know where he was trying to go. I didn't know why. He was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just, like, you know, give me a ride. And I saw my friend walking home from the campus on the side of the road, and I pulled over. And I think he realized, he was like, who the hell is this guy in your car? And the dude got out, like, right there. I was like, but I think about that all the time. I was like, yo, I almost fucking died or got sexually assaulted because I couldn't be like, Fuck off. Leave me alone. You're not picking up any of my freaking discomfort or the social cues. I'm trying to kindly, politely say, go away. And you're it's not. It's way better to be mean than to be a victim. It's not worth yep. dying over. I'd rather be mean than be victimized any fucking right? day. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't want that anymore. I've had enough no. of that shit. And it's the same thing with like, you could sit here for years and years and years and be like, hey, I'm not really comfortable with that. Or hey. And I've had, like, I had a moderator that after three or four years was like, you know, 
even despite how many times I had like stated that like I was not interested in pursuing a relationship with any of my chat was like, well, I just thought that because that's because you're demisexual and that, you know, we just didn't have that emotional connection, but that if we had that emotional connection, something blew me. I was like, how many times have I said, like stated my boundaries and said, I have no interest in pursuing a relationship with you? Yeah. I'm the exception. You know, that makes the other wolf stronger because then the other wolf just wants to be like, next time this person says something inappropriate, I'm going to be like, fuck off. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. it's, the beautiful it's, it's, albino wolf that is white and catches the moonlight gets pissed on a lot, man. It's always going to be Dunning-Kruger. Like, well, and you get to a point, too, where it's like you have so many people who don't react properly to gentleness, so you just go straight to fuck off. Like, you don't have time. I don't have time to worry yeah. about every person's feelings who are trying to get into my life in one way or another. I don't have the time or the energy. Like, yeah. So I just start responding now with like extreme, like I go all the way over where I'm just like, okay, Concise. I'm going to assume you're the worst. So I'm going to treat you like the worst because I don't trust anyone. And I have too many experiences that tell me that this could be bad. So I'm just going to go ahead and let's do it. And you like know that. what, Britt, I'm interested in your opinion on this. Have you, do you feel like people will come up with these grievances or this type of thing in order to force some type of intimate conversation? Like they'll bait having a problem with <laughs> Oh, you to like yes. Sit there and reason and defend with them a and psychic tell them vampire. about your character. And then, oh, well, I had no idea. You know what? I don't think you're vain anymore. Have you, like, because when I first got this email, I was like, this is bait, right? Because he wants oh, yeah. me to sit here and defend myself so we can have some type of an interaction, right? Yep. Yep. That happens all the time. It's, uh, it's awful and people do it and they either don't realize they're doing it which is terrible because they haven't taken the time to realize it, or they do, and they're using it as a tool. Yep. I'm shaking my head in uh, discomfort and horror chat. <laughs> not not in disagreement. I'm like, oh, my God, that sounds fucking no, horrible. No, because by not, doing that, no, this they, is dumb and fake. they force you to be uh, uncomfortable. So you're suddenly uncomfortable, so you're in a position of less power. And then you are forced to either open up, which gives them something to use against you, or you are forced to be an asshole, which gives them something to use against you. It's a very simple, straightforward tactic by manipulative people that happens every day. Like, you got to be able to recognize so it, sad. and then when you recognize it, you stop it. Jesse, are you the okay? more you know? Hey, okay, Jesse, this yeah. is just the reality of the world, man. We can keep, we can keep having fun, Look, having laughs. Jesse, everybody, I, it's a dark, dark, dark world, world man. Are, everybody, everybody, Sorry, feel Jesse. feel bad, feel bad for Jesse. Jesse's Jesse's yes, Jesse. our history teacher and big nerd. And they're the same wolf. Sorry, what? I blacked out. What? It's, it's, what a, happened? it's a what happened? <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's, where are we? Yeah. What is, it's a three-headed Is it Wednesday? Dog. Is it Wednesday again? <laughs> <clears throat> We're back? Jesse. Oh my God. <laughs> are you ready to play some Dungeons & Dragons? No! Clearly <laughs> not. <laughs> Nothing in this world is ever going to change. I just discovered I don't have two wolves. My whole life is upside dumb. down. <laughs> and work on themselves. I don't even got any damn wolves. I got no hunger. I got two pugs that are like. One of those pugs is going to get buff and veiny. I promise you. We're gonna <laughs> I don't get want a that. buff veiny pug. That thing will be ugly as <laughs> one shit. One of those pugs is going to get just gonna like advocate one big for you. pulsing vein. That pug is going to advocate for you. And I don't want a pug to advocate for me. You, that pug is going to be like. Why you can't want... that Reddit burner That pug's <laughs> paws are going to turn inside this way because his muscles are too big. He's going to walk like this. Why? So I have yes, like, a, elbows out. like a bulldog, a British bulldog. Yeah. <laughs> With like a top hat, like a little bowler hat. That's what I want. Doubting objection. <laughs> and he has a pipe for some reason. Yeah. He's All right. Well, I'm back. All right. We're good again. That, that All right. Perfect. I'm sold. I'm sold. Yeah. I'm sold. <laughs> There's a raid in chat, except that I feel like our pre-show our pre-show podcast is like so chaotic that nothing could compete. What happened? There was a raid? <laughs> You got, oh, you got raided, oh, Jesse. I didn't even notice. I was too busy blacking out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we should start playing the game. Where did we? Uh, where did we end off last time? Does you anybody kill remember? Y'all are. Dying. Oh, I you're feel like dying. Stephen made you do, and you're just making us talk about it. <laughs> Y'all are fighting Melkart on top of a tower yeah. at the top of the palace compound. The sky above you is like a huge red ball of fire as the sun approaches its ultimate death. 
and uh, you're 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 fighting around this like magnificent telescopic orrery construction. Uh, you've already slain Blood of the Lamb, and also um, there are six versions of Melkart floating around you. Or uh, one, two, three, four, five. Nope, that's four. One of those is actually bronze. Um, there's four Melkarts, and uh, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. It looks like two of you are stunned right now. Yeah. I see Ankara and Kairos both needing to just, make intelligence yeah. saving throws. We're just chilling in the stun lobby. All right. Then I would like the four of you to know that I have two wolves inside of me. One, one is of a them steak. is a steak knife. <laughs> and one of them is a bagel. No! And I'm going to feed one of them today. <laughs> Starek, what do you do? <laughs> Wake up, pugs. Wake up. <laughs> I need you now more than ever. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm going to uh, take a shot at... Um, I'm undercover, so I'm going to take a shot at... I guess this one that's right here in front of me? Okay. Time to die. Do I do I need to redo my uh, insightful, insightful fighting? Insightful fighting? No, you've got that from last time. Good. Take a shot to the face, lady. Nineteen hits. Roll for damage. Nice. Thirteen plus five, and your uh, sneak attack damage. Ten. Ten. Oh, she's gonna hit me. She's gonna hit me. Two ones in there. Uh, this version of Melkart vanishes. Ooh, never mind. Get wrecked. Ooh, ah, yeah. Don't judge a pug do do? hater. Okay, so I'm the one that's like mostly dead, right? You are almost dead. Yeah, you I was gonna HP. crack a moon shard on you. Um, mm, and th and this turn. is I'm trying to remember which one was the one I discerned was the real one. I think this is the real one because it's. It, it hit Brit with a tentacle before the last. Okay. I think, I think it is. I'm, I can't remember. I think I'm completely out of spell slots. Um, I am indeed. All right. So I'm going to try to get them away from us with two Eldritch Blasts and hope that both hit. Okay. Two Eldritch Blasts connect solidly with Melkart's chest. And she gets flung backwards. Roll for damage. Nice. Oh my god, that roll. <laughs> oh, that's better. That's Every little bit. It's 10 feet each time, right? Yes, 10 feet each time. And I also have Lance of Lethargy, so her movement speed is yeah, gone. Cut in half. Yeah, she's now moves 10 feet until the end of my next turn. Oh yeah, right. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. So that was 21 and she damage. she moved a total of uh, 20 feet. Yes. Her health bar is not moving, y'all. Nah, y'all have got this. But uh, she'll have to use her whole movement to get back to you, Britt, so I don't think she could tentacle you again. However, I may have accidentally screwed over Kairos with that. I, we'll probably it should have, I probably should have hit this person once to dispel that mirror image, but I wasn't thinking. You know I love a target-rich environment. Where are in terms of the <laughs> round, like, of turn? Uh, they act on your turn. On mine? Okay. I think I'm pretty sure that's how we were running it last time. Cool. We didn't add them to the initiative order, so I'm assuming. And well, we'll roll if Kairos can't get rid of it, I can send one over to get rid of the fake one. Kairos, matters. would you save versus being stunned? It's an intelligence saving throw. DC 15. Yep. I have a 25% okay. chance of succeeding, y'all. Wow. And Kara. What do you do? Oh, yeah, you're also stunned. Please make an intelligence saving throw, DC 15. Oof. Are you serious? With a plus five, too. Woof. No, I can't do anything. Ah, Wait, now then, let's are my see. Eagles also stunned? Yeah, uh, one of your Wait eagles is stunned, and the other one is not. So th this eagle is oh, yeah, still awake. So please tell me about okay. thine eagle. That eagle is going to go over to, I should just kill the fake one, right, guys? Get it out of there. Yeah, if you have, 
yeah. if you have something like magic missile that does a lot of or like a little bit of damage to multiple targets that would be cool i don't know if, if you have anything like that that like i don't think i have anything that won't hurt kairos as well because most of my stuff is like oh. aoe damage i guess i have produced flame well i can't do anything because i'm stunned can you cast right. polymorph all i can do is do this well can i cast spells when i'm stunned if you can no. cast okay so i was thinking about it and I was thinking about this for this session. I probably should have said it earlier, but we were so busy discussing about how sh terrible people are on average. Um, <laughs> so being stunned absolutely fucking sucks in 5e. And there's really, like, no way to get rid of it. Except you could theoretically polymorph somebody into a form that's immune to being stunned and then be immune. And then... <laughs> uh, you or know, or cast that. a ninth level power word heal. So like but whichever I can't one's more I'm likely. Unstunned, I would rather right? be a squirrel. I would rather just you turn me into a squirrel and then uh Can I, I do can I do that though while I'm stunned? No. I can't cast not no. while you're stunned. Okay, not so with, that's all we're theoretical. Both, we're both screwed. Yeah. But so theoretically, all I have is my eagle right now. Yeah. The question really is just the eagle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's just go over and uh, attack this this one. Okay. If there was a, a nine way... and an eighteen, the talons hit. Can you aid or someone with saving throw? Yes, if you are. I'm gonna move that. If then... you can, <laughs> if you could aid somebody on a, on a saving throw, that would be. So we were rolling at advantage. That would also be helpful. I don't think I can. How how could I do that? Um, I think that I it think is technically possible you. for it to to be done, but you, uh, Inkara, cannot do that. Like, can the eagles help us? Is the question. But I don't really think. I don't know how no. an eagle will help you not be stunned. I don't think so. Let me take a look at the aid action. A, B, C, D, F, G. No. Because it's an ability check. Sucks. Helping The help action is an ability check, not a saving throw. That's why I had to look it's up. It's just an eagle. So her stunning is like the <laughs> cone she does, right? Yeah. Like the AoE cone? Um. Yeah. So she had an AoE cone, and that stunned Kairos. And I think the thing that stunned in Kara was her tentacle attack. Um. Also does like a, a, a mind psychic effect that causes stunning. But it's probably good though then I, that I pushed her towards Kairos because if she attacks again, can't she do the brain suction? Yep. While stunned. Okay. So yep. yeah, we needed to get her off of Ankara. Wait, but can, but she can't do that to Kairos because Kairos is stunned by another effect, not by brain suction. So no, unfortunately, Melkart steps up over here, okay. and then this Melkart moves over here. And uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Yes. Yes. Uh, I believe that Augur of Atikusu can be used on any incapacitated target, yeah. not not merely a target that's been incapacitated by Psychic Blast. I believe that's correct. But how does this work when I have Orcish Resilience? Uh, well, uh, Orcish Resilience will... I mean... Do I turn into a tentacle monster, or do no, I have one I, HP? No, I think that uh, orcish resilience would kick in before you actually hit zero. That's my ruling of the situation. You don't go to zero and then return to one. Okay. Uh, the killing blow is is uh, capped at one HP. Um, she steps up and she tries to augur a batikusu. Um, question: If you are stunned, does she have advantage? Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> Reach yep, in that it. bag, get your steak knife. Wow! <laughs> Toss a steak knife to your witch. Uh, yeah, that's 10d10. But it's okay, I go down to one. <clears throat> Incredible. Uh, you're still stunned, right? Yep. God. Oh. Yeah, being stunned sucks. It's like you can't do anything. Literally, I it's, it's, this is like this is like being stun locked out. in a fucking fighting game. Get out! Like, yeah. Combo, 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 combo. No, I'm like, no, get, get no. I, I'm literally raging, like throwing my. I break like, my fucking she controller. Can't, okay, so no. you'll get knocked out, but you won't get killed, right? No, orca, like, yeah, orcus yeah. resilience fires. Yeah, I'm. I don't die. Uh, so orcus relentless, relentless. Sorry, resent, relentless now. endurance is the term, and I, I have it here. Uh, yeah, relentless, reduced, relentless endurance saved you now. Yes. Um, I will drop to one point instead of getting my brain extracted. But if she does it again, you'll get your brain extracted. Correct. Uh, 
Adrian! <laughs> Instead, <laughs> she looks back at Aya. And then she smiles, this creepy grin. And then she opens her hands wide and begins summoning the magical ether to her aid. No! Aya, you recognize this spell as the same one that you counterspelled last time. She's I casting. don't have any more counter spells, Steven. No. Negative I energy flood. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> I would listen to the album called Negative Energy Here's Flood. What I want to still, know. despite dying I, to it, I'll still as listen a warlock, to it. Warlock have two spell slots, and this bitch has like thirty. <laughs> what class is she exactly? Where Atikusu gave me the great value version of the pack, because this. <laughs> She's casting way more spells than I can. This is great value with no E at the end. This is a capital I U. The, I got the, I, we have a warlock packed at home. <laughs> yeah, the, Kirkland, the Kirkland's best. The Kirk the Kirkland's best warlock. Kid. Kirkland's best, yeah. Donald's packed one. of the pantry. <laughs> they also make water. It's great. Water and shoes. Kirkland's best. Wow. And trail so, And spells. Eric, <laughs> great value. Yeah. Would you make a constitution saving throw DC 15? No fear. Fuck. <laughs> One fear. <laughs> One fear. You take 33 necrotic damage. I turn into a zombie. And you're going to turn into a zombie at the start of the next turn. Sorry. Everyone. Oh. Can we prevent that from happening? Or no? No. Only you can prevent four zombies. The only person who can deal with this is literally Kairos. He's the one who can yeah. turn undead. We can't. Question. Can I kill him? Yes. yes. Why, yeah. why do I not have a zombie? Wait, but if we kill a zombie, if can I we points, heal I can a zombie? Yeah, if we kill him, can we bring him back to life as not a zombie? There we go. Why, 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 why. That's a real question. If you kill him, will he come back to life as not a zombie? If I like kill if him, kill we, a... if I kill a zombie, and then we resurrect him, is he still a zombie? Does my soul get back into it? Because uh, I don't know about this. Is an existential fucking question. I would say no. <laughs> I would say no. I'm just like I'm trying to help us out here. If I can one shot him as a zombie, but that's then... not raw, so I don't know. You know, if I can one shot like, him as you a zombie, have some then kind we heal of him. resurrection spell, and you can use it in the middle of combat. Yes, you may resurrect true Kairos instead of zombie Kairos. You need but, me and a diamond because I have revivify. I could do it, but the problem is, but but doctor, I am the healer. <laughs> <laughs> but not for me. <laughs> Points gun itself. <laughs> I am the healer, but not for me. <laughs> yeah, All right, so, sorry. So we're screwed. Turn. What do you do? Oh, no. It makes right. sense. You would well, need to use a raised dead spell. Uh, I'm going to attack the one that's, um, uh, that is uh, on by the stairs. Okay. All right. From downtown. Let's see here. Never mind. Oh my god. We're gonna die here. 13. <laughs> Nay. Uh, Aya. I just imagine being down on the battlefield, like looking over at Sarek. Like, okay, we're, yeah, we're, gonna <laughs> we're die all here. die. This we're is... all gonna die here. <laughs> oh, okay, great. I have, like, I don't know if this is metagaming, but doesn't this say the zombie pursues whatever creature it can see that's closest to it? So is it Zombie Kairos just going to go for Malkart anyway? Yes. Like, even in death, you're useful, Kairos. <laughs> you know, that is technically correct. All I can ask for. I don't wanna, the best I don't kind be of correct. meta gamey -y. Okay, I have another question. So, <laughs> can you remove... No, never mind. That's stupid. Oh, now you have to say it. Time out. Now you have to say it. It was it was just, it was really stupid. I know that's why I want to hear it. I just watched a stunned Kairos take a shit ton of damage, and I was gonna ask if I could unstun Ankara by dealing damage, but that's that's dumb because I just saw that. that but that's Final Fantasy rules that could apply. I know, I think, but like we just saw Kairos get murked for like sixty damage and While not being get unstunned. Stunned. Yep, so, unfortunately, I, yeah. the stun. Mm. Let me double check this because if so, then we just need a mulligan on this whole fucking fight. But 
I don't believe that damage breaks stun in the dungeons and But the what if it does? And what if that bronze Be potential stupid question is genius? We're gonna have to we're gonna end up redoing this fight either way. If you if you read the rule book, there is like nothing about being dead. There are no rules for being dead. There is no stat. It says, you know, a dead creature can't move or do actions. None of that exists. You could, like, technically, nothing, rules nothing written. matters as, at, at zero HP like that. Yeah. Rules is as written. written. I can keep acting when I'm dead. So I guess, I guess the other thing, though, that might preface that is that, yeah, it being dead doesn't preclude other conditions. So your conditions would remain while dead. Yeah. You, so. you, are, you are stunned and, un wait, uh... Aya, what are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to launch an Eldritch Blast at this one mirror image, because then maybe we can soak up one of her tries trying to make more mirror images. You hit. So this mirror image gets popped. I think that was the last one. Yeah. Plop. And now we just have one uh, Melkart left. Let's see. Which one's the real one? That one. I've got a GM copy, GM layer copy, so that I know which one is the, the real Melkart. All right, cool. That was one. You have a second Eldritch Blast you can fire. This is like, I feel like the one time that I really wish I had Hex. I would have gotten so much use out of Hex on this. Um, mm -hmm. I guess just over time, I think I would have. Um, I'm going to just hit her with the second one. Yeah, that's the only thing I can do. Okay. 23 hits. Roll that damage. I think this is where the whole fight's really going to turn around for you guys. That's why, it. Why? I'm not going to push her back. Cause, why do yeah, you have so to say gonna... it like that, man? Like, that's rude as shit. Um, can I move? <laughs> yes, you can. Okay, why is that to be like that? We're friends. Move here to We're line of sight. Night time. Yeah, I'm going to move here to line of sight. I know she cool. can move and still get me but i just want to do that yeah you are obscured from your current position you awesome. used to be cool steven kairos what do you do and why is it i attack melkart because i'm a zombie <laughs> brains <laughs> where, where is the zombie there it is why is it under bosses zombie you don't belong under bosses oh you, you didn't have to do that for me for zombie kairos thanks thanks i got a little bagel with that steak knife a whole bagel. Just mm -hmm. a little, little it's like a mini bagel, bagel bite. A little, little pizza on the bagel. <laughs> Zombie Kairos slams Melkart. Slam. And miss. When pizza's on a bagel. You are not you welcome to the jam. Pizza anytime. anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pizza in the morning. Pizza in the evening. Good night, yeah. Pizza at supper time. <laughs> and Kara. Yeah, okay. Intelligence. Got it. Yeah. Finally, jeez. Nailed it. So that happens jeez. at the end of your turn. So your turn is over, but you've got a giant eagle. What do you do? Well, we're gonna attack. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna attack. Mm, miss and also miss. But Damn. you also should make two intelligence saving throws for your other incapacitated giant eagle. No. Ooh. First one fails, but this round the giant eagle succeeds and you're no longer incapacitated. We're gonna clear those debuffs from the both of you. You're free, you go. Free, free to die just in time. <laughs> Melkart time. Mm -hmm -hmm. Sarix way over there. She can move full speed now. You can't 40. get me. I'm undercover too. There's an eagle there. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, uh, she's gonna move over here. Boink. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Yeah, she can't see Sarek. Mm -mm. Shoot, I'm hiding from you. Shoot. Yeah, she's going to uh, strike at the giant eagle next to her with her tentacle arm. She reaches out and her arm just transforms into a bundle of tentacles that grasp out. Ooh, wow, whoa, double ones, holy cow. Wowie. Miss uh, me. She Some limp tentacles the, there. She takes the disengage action, and then she moves again. So this is her second initiative turn. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, my God. Six. <laughs> Sorry. And then what does she do? <laughs> 
<laughs> wait, wait, what? How'd you get over yeah, there? Yeah, it's like the thing where you think you're hiding and then you look to your left and she's standing there. Uh, she looks at you, Sarek, and she says, cool trick. Where did you learn it from? Uh, and she, uh, oh, wait, shit. What's she going to do? Shit. Trick. Um, yeah, and she Eldritch Blasts at you. What trick? What are you talking about? So Put your hands see. down. Uh, Stop it. Oh, no. It's roll 1d20 plus 7. Dodge out the way. Flip. Flip. Whoa. She is rolling badly. Eric Flip out the one way. The ones. Uh, does a 17 no. hit you, No, I have an 18 armor class. Oh, oh, shit. It's a good yeah. thing we looked that up last time. Yep. Are you mad? She's mad now. Sorry, what do you do? Shoot, Shoot her, her in the damn face. Shoot her. <laughs> Shoot her in her damn Shoot stupid her. face. Uh, Laughs and projectiles. Get her. Ooh. Oh, you hit. 15 plus 4 plus 18 is that's 19 plus 18 Wait. is 37. I don't want I don't want to be I don't want to be the person, but why do you have sneak attack? Do you have insightful striking it? Fighting yeah. on? Yeah. He has insightful okay. fighting. Okay, okay. Hell yes. Also, uh, yeah, Sark gives her like a, like, how about that trick, bitch? And then he sneaks around to the other side of this. <laughs> <laughs> how about that trick, bitch? <laughs> she, she grunts and, uh, and, and, and curses under her breath. And then she says, Atikusu, blood of the lamb, aid me. And then, she splits into six. No! Mm. Wait, how did she get to do that? It's not her turn. It's a reaction. I'll react to that. Shh. Man. That's four. Yeah. Oh, man. That's five. This is good to know for the next version of this fight. Low we can just move around all if we want because they don't have reactions. That's six. Okay. Uh, the next thing that happens is the pile of burnt feathers and uh, carrion mm -mm. in the middle of the floor mm -mm. that is blood of the lamb mm -mm. <laughs> catches on fire and up out of the flames comes a reborn blood of the lamb. Make sure you roll her for freezing. Is she froze? Is she cold? Oh yeah. yeah, we gotta do the we gotta do the thing. Okay. Uh, that's a Constitution saving throw, DC thirteen. Bloop. She called him. Oh. So I've got a copy of her that is the real one. Yeah, yeah. This one is going straight to the GM layer, and then I'm moving it to where she actually is, which you don't know. <laughs> Are they all frozen? Uh, they all look like they are encrusted with a rime of ice that is slowing their movements. Hmm. Sorry. What do you? I mean, I'm. I'm. It's. I just did my turn, so I'm like hiding back here. Oh yeah. So. You did damage. I. Yeah. What do you? Do? I don't know if this is bad. <laughs> But all, I know all these things are going to start engaging in chicanery, and I'm, okay, fuck it. I, I'm going to, like, do my little and open my Eye of Agamotto. Cool. Um, and cast Magic Stone if there are three stones nearby. And see yeah. if I can pop three of the mirror images. Absolutely. That sounds dope. Okay, nice. so first, an Arcana check. And it's just DC 10, right? Yeah. Oh, so I successfully I cast the spell. You see three pebbles from the ground just, like, shoot up and start levitating. Yeah. And then, uh, let's see. So you touch one of three pebbles and view them with magic. You or someone else can make a ranged spell attack with one of the pebbles by throwing... Oh, so I can only use one at a time. Yes. But the casting time is a bonus action, so I can still attack this turn. Yep. If thrown, it has a range of 60 feet. If someone else attacks with the pebble, that attacker adds your spellcasting ability modifier, not the attacker's, to the attack roll. On a hit, the target takes bludgeoning damage equal to 1d6 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. 
Um, and then if I cast again, the spell ends early on any... So I guess maybe Eldritch Blast would have been the smarter move. Well, okay, no, because it's a bonus action, so I can still hit twice with Eldritch Blast. Yep. But if anybody wants a magical rock... <laughs> We've got them. So they're, they're hanging out. They're hovering. All right, can we so... throw them as a bonus action? <laughs> I don't I think don't so. That's, that's okay. the DM's discretion. <laughs> um, for some reason, I thought I could shoot all three of them. Okay, that's yeah. okay. That's okay. We'll do... It didn't cost me anything, because I don't have anything else I could do on a bonus action. Nice. Your second one hits. Who are you targeting? I am targeting this fucker and this one. Okay, so the 12 misses, so this one, the uh, one immediately north of you misses, the one to the, like, left hits. Or this one. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then... Eight damage. This clone vanishes. Nice. Zoop. Perfect. And then... Ooh. This might be the time! We've got a roll. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Is it okay? Okay, okay. I might be doing something. What's fifteen? Twenty? Thirty! I use my cape of the night cowl. What is what does it do? I basically draw myself into my cowl and I reveal my true terrifying <gasps> form yes! to a target. Within 30 feet that can see me, the target is terrified of my presence and automatically stunned. Awesome. Yeah. How does it feel? Mel Cards, you're stunned now. And in a, in a second here, my friend and car is going to beat the dog shit out of you. Yeet. Cool. Cool. I like it. All right. Um, that was amazing. Cool. Yeah, Kairos, so the zombie stuck. lunges to the side, Ugh, brains, eagle, brains, and attacks the eagle with a slam, uh, which hits and does four bludgeoning damage to the giant eagle. Good job, Kairos. That's, I'm doing my part. <laughs> Good job. Blood of the Lamb bursts into flames, just like erupting from between his feathers. He soars up into the air and then moves over here. So technically here, uh, Aya, you have an attack of opportunity, and so does Marshmallow. Okay. Do I, I too? We'll both attack. No, because Brit, it's staying within your threat range. Okay. All right, so... Oh, I see, yeah. My attack is. Ooh. Nice. That's a hit. I don't do that much. Oh damage. wait, blood of the lamb. Yeah, that's barely a hit, actually. But it, but it is. Nice. It's not, Minus it's not three. Much. I'm not a melee character, y'all. And then, uh, marshmallow. Is gonna bite. Okay. Eighteen hits. Hmm. So it's so it's seven poison damage and one piercing. Nice. Is there a save on that poison damage at all? It doesn't. No, say. It just there's says one, not. Yeah, one piercing damage plus seven poison. That's awesome. Bite Minus em. Minus eight. Bite him. Uh, Marshmallow screams a battle cry. What what battle cry do you think Marshmallow would use, Bronze? Probably something like... Blup. Blup! Blup! <laughs> blup! It's Marshmallow. I wish I wish I wish his was like, Blood and thunder will rain from the skies this day. But it's going to be like... I got him. We, <laughs> oh, whoa. Blood and thunder will wane from the sky. Blood of the lamb Blood. opens wow. its great beak, and from the depths of its belly echoes, blood and thunder will rain from the sky <laughs> on this <damn> day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And face to face, Marshmallow says, Blah. Blah. <laughs> And Blood Blah. of the Lamb exhales fire. Would the three of you make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw? <laughs> Which three? Me three? No, and Kara, Aya, and Marshmallow. I'm gonna use my reaction to use one charge on the Raven Mantle. Yep. Because I'm not gonna make it, and instead teleport through him. Well, no, like that's over not behind. Smart. Yeah, no, 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 that's not smart because then he'll attack me. Uh, or that I'll be in range here. I'll just teleport away. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna teleport over here if I can. Because yeah, she's sure. stunned, and I can use her as a meat shield from this person. That I don't. That's my logic. I don't know if that's real. <laughs> oh, probably really not smart. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Come on. Wait a minute. Are you moving Malkar? No. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Got it. Cool. Um. And Kara, you take 15 fire damage, and Marshmallow, I need a, a dexterity saving throw from. I'm set to do not disturb chat. It's not me. I don't think it's me either. It's not me. Marshmallow gets 24. So Marshmallow also takes 15 damage. Not me. And Marshmallow falls to the ground, dead. Ah! In a smoldering pile Fine. of snake feathers. He's on the moon. It's OK. It's OK. We'll, uh, we'll put the little axe on. And Kara, mm -hmm. what do you do? Yeah, so I'm going to go over to Aya and break my moon shard. Oh, nice. Thank you. And then I'm also, since I'm over there and I just have a bonus left, I'm just going to do a healing word as well. I'll just do first level since I'm already. Cool. Here. Wait, if you have an action. I don't. That was my action oh. is to give you the moon shard. So okay. I'm just, it's a bonus action. So you get six more. Um, 28 total. And then I'm going to have my one giant angle, the uh, one right next to that. Uh, milk cart attack. Miss, miss. Missing both. And I guess I'll have my other eagle also attack that one to see if we can just like get rid of it. Fuck. Okay, finally. Wow. Oh, on the real one. That was a good d attack. Okay, well, anyway, that one. Like over here. Yeah. yeah you you uh, eliminate one of the one of the Boom. clones that just vanishes. Fantastic. My turn. All right. So. Let's see. The mail carts shift around a little bit. This one moves up to Jesse. No. This one moves over to here. No. This one moves over to here. And I think that's it. There's only um, four mail carts right now, right? Yeah, totally. OK, so they all raise their hands and uh, open their mouths and shriek like uh, uh, an air-rending shriek. It actually is emanating from over here, and it hits all of you. Mm. Tharek and Kara and Aya. Would what, you, is this, what is this ability count as? Would you make an intelligence save? DC 15. But like, is it an AOE thing? It's an AOE thing, but your dodge only works when you are making a dexterity saving throw. Thunder Mifflin. Well, thankfully, this is, what is this? this is, oh, ass, never mind. Actually, wait, I need to set this up differently. Uh... It's, it's this one who steps back over here. Uh, and that's that's the one that you can sense the uh, psychic shriek emanating from. So, Brit fails. 
Uh, Aya Did mine and not work? Okay. No, it didn't come through. <gasps> Ooh. Wow. Okay. So, nice. Britt, you take 48 plus 4. So you take 21 psychic damage, and you are stunned. I'm also... How much did I say? You said 21? 21. Okay. So you're stunned. Um, and then... Ooh, chat's, chat's coming in hard on Do Team Us. Then maybe... Then maybe break time. It, Chats, it, it, it definitely is break time. Chat's saying that some of them were stunned, Stephen. Um... Get them, chat. Get them, chat. Get them, chat. You... I don't know what would have stunned them. The Cloak of the Night from... from um, oh, yeah, of course. Yep, yeah, of course. That's right. All right, let's go to break, and then let's figure out what actually happened. <laughs> because Fair enough. it's not this. And when we but come I back... Didn't, I don't have an AoE stun, for clarification. I only stunned Melkart. It's not an AoE. It's not everyone within 30 feet. It's oh. one character within 30 feet. Oh. That's true. Right, but, but one okay. of them should have been stunned. Yeah, one, yes. one, one yes. of them should have been stunned. Yeah. I don't know which one was Melkart. I made a assumption. Which one did you stun? The one that is closest to Ankara. Okay, uh, you got lucky. So we, we will uh, reconsider this when we get back. All right. Okay. We'll be back in a hot sec. See you then. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Sunfall Cycle. <laughs> I can't get over the pain face. I can't, it actually physically hurts like to try and hold up one. I'm terrible at it. Why don't you count like this? Well, because I, in my mind, I exist in that Wayne's world where he's like, like that. From but the movie, Wayne's world. Like... <laughs> Jesse yeah. has two pugs, and one of them is that scene from the movie Wayne's world. <laughs> one of them is Wayne, and one of them is Garth. You're right. And they're all wearing Adidas track outfits while eating Domino's pizza. I didn't know they were Russian. You clearly don't remember that movie, and that's fine, because you're not a thousand years old like me. I have not seen that. Aren't I your age, Jesse? I've not <laughs> seen that movie in a very long time. It's the best right. scene. So, okay, we've rewound a little bit. We've rewound some things that have happened. So, uh, Aya, you stunned this, this Melkart right here. With your, uh, with your, your cloak of the night cowl. So, okay. What this means is all, what, how many of them are there right now? There's one, two, three, four. All four of the Melkarts stand there with their, like, hands on their heads, like, screwing their eyes closed. And that passes for both of Melkart's uh, turns. And then, this Melkart, the clone that you know is a clone because there's only one real Melkart, this Melkart stands up and she looks at you and she kind of laughs. And then, let's see. Yeah, she's going to move over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She moves here. And then she psychic screams. Like that. Missing, missing herself, but hitting the three of you. So, now... We'll use the results from before if, unless anybody wants to re-roll the results. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Aya, you... Yes, Aya and Sarg, both of you saved. That means you don't take the psychic damage and you're not stunned. 
Um, Inkara did fail. She takes the 21 damage and she's stunned. Uh, and that is the end of the combat round. We're back around to Sarek. Well, I can't wait to murder. Um, Let the shit out of her. Let's she's see. She's stunned, so you have advantage. Yes, I would like to, and we know the real one. Yes, we. I can accurately pinpoint the real one. So you know that all of the other three are stunned, and this one up here mm -hmm. is moving. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. And and just uttered a psychic shriek. Shriek. So yeah, like, you so know I'm that that's like, yeah. All right, a real I, one. I, I was like, do I need to roll to make sure I know this information? All right. I'm not going to roll. I'm going to attack. 19 hits. 15. Nice. Plus 16 is 31. I'm going to sit back in my pull and peel Twizzler and just uh, enjoy. Very nice. Aya. Okay. I am going to... Sarek attacked this one, correct? The, this... this one up here. Yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking. I'm trying to I'm trying to wonder if it might be more beneficial to go here. Maybe move here. Well, no, because I would have to well, hold up. Let me if I moved here. I could hit both, and that'll save us for a round. What do you guys think? Should I damage her twice and send her flying back and reduce her movement speed to 10? But then we have to deal with the blood of the lamb and these eight mirror images, or should I start dispelling the mirror images? I think, honestly... They're not mirror images. Let's or, try sorry, to the illusions. Let's try to kill yeah. this lady mm -hmm. and see what happens on the face. Because you know there's going to be a face. Look at that dumb yeah. smile on his stupid face. You know there's going to be a face. <laughs> Let's just see it so we know how badly we're screwed for next time. Okay, okay, you're right, you're right. Good call. Two hits. I've actually been rolling decently. That's very good, yeah. 15 and 12, so that's 27. Not bad. Y'all are putting out the damage numbers. And she gets knocked back 20 feet, right? Yeah, and, and movement speed 20. reduced to 10. Yep. And then I'm going to move uh, just over here. Okay, cool. Yeah. At the end of your turn, the stun from your Cloak of the Night Cal ends. Uh -huh. Kairos shamb shambles forwards. I believe that zombies only have a move speed of 20 feet, so 10, 20. And Kairos attacks this wounded eagle. Yep. Even wow. in death, I'm tactical. Brains. Dealing three bludgeoning damage, which does kill the eagle. It's dead. Yo! Blood go, of go, the go, Lamb. That's no good. Sweeps over to Inkara. Yeah. Oh, let's roll. Hey, actually, crazy question on that, Steven. Like, this isn't even like a goof, even though it's going to sound like one. Yeah. Does Kairos proceed to eat? Like, if you're a zombie, do yeah. you just take turns yes. to, like, eat a thing? Is he but it disappears because it's a summoned creature. It's oh, true. all right. Never mind. But, like, let's say he ate me. Let's say Kairos was eating me. Yeah. Um, is that like, does it take time or does the he GM just, fiat. yeah, probably like it would take a couple turns for him to like crack open the skull, get at the sweet meats, you know? All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Crack open a cold one. <laughs> <laughs> With the boys. <laughs> All right. So blood of the lamb fails to regenerate his fire breath. And so he just bites at Ankara with advantage. Missing. No problem. Ankara. Please roll your saving throw. Okay. You see 15 intelligence save. What is nope. going on with these rolls? Okay, well, I'm sorry. But you do have a giant eagle. Do you attack zombie Kairos? Yeah, I, well, no, I don't want to hurt him. Um, no, let's just attack. Just, uh, if you move that eagle away. Twenty hits. Roll the damage. Thirteen damage. That hits and does damage. Wow. Oh my god. Okay. 
It's Melkart time. Uh, so first, and Kara, this Melkart right next to you, reaches forwards with her tentacles. No. Actually, no. She she opens her head and explodes a collection of eyes and tentacles from her head and uses Augur of Atacusu on you with advantage, hitting you, dealing you 56 piercing Ooh, damage. Good Bye. night. I'm dead. Devouring your brain and killing you. Good night. Bye-bye. Yep. Oh, my poor eagles. Yes, and then your giant eagle vanishes. And then she moves over here. Oh, we need to roll to recover. 1d6. Nope, she does not recover her psychic stream. She moves over here and she... Um... Actually, wait, let's see, let's see, let's see. What can we set up? Yeah, she moves up there. Well, no, wait. <laughs> I hate that. I want to win this it's fight. It's cool. I'm not suspenseful at suspense at all. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, this is what she does. Yeah, we're dead. She reaches out her hand and she speaks a word of power under her breath. Inferni. And a flame erupts behind Sarek and Aya. What, it didn't go? Oh, yeah, cast it at level five, right? Yeah, five. Uh, click that, level five, loop, click. Would the two of you roll a DC 15 dexterity saving throw? Is this an AOE? It is an AOE, it is a dexterity yeah, save. All right. Have your dodge. You still gotta do the 15. Good. All right, cool. Sarek takes zero damage from this. Aya takes 38. I'm dead. Okay. And then this Purgatory waiting room here moves. Wow, I can't believe this. You might actually win this. Um, let's see. We got to take a look at some ranges here. Combat roll. Combat roll. Come at me, dude. I still have 41 HP. Come at me. I'm winning. I'm taking this lady down, and then I get to rub it in everyone's face. Who is the master? No, I am the ball. master. Hey, she doesn't recharge her psychic scream. Ooh, this is a tough one. I'm going to kill this lady. Yeah. <laughs> I dodged a fireball. You got nothing on me. What do you, you can't look through the source book. Just pull out the whole source book. Throw whatever you got at me. Nothing taking me down. Why All would right. you say that? Why would you? Because I want him, I don't want the easy way out. I want him to be like, I use level 12 necromatic slap and it I misses. Use, <laughs> and I it use misses. wall of force and surround you in a dome so you slowly starve over weeks. She, she stretches out her hand and she casts her final spell. She speaks a word. A stop. A stop. A stop. A stop. Does she cast slow on you? And she's casting hold person. Uh, Please make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw. DC 15 wisdom. Just straight up wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh baby, you're dead. I saw you. Oh baby. Ah. So, that was the end of that. Sorry, it's your turn. Go ahead and make another DC 15 wisdom saving throw. Okay. You succeed. You're no longer stunned. Bring it. Melkart. Bring it. Moves up here. Send your again. best. Nope, she doesn't recover. Melkart moves up here. <laughs> Uh, they're all are all they're all also frosted, by the way. So can she move up there? Uh, it's been long enough since the. Oh, you mean? Wait, wait, wait. They have the they have the ice. They're all they were all iced. Um. At last. Since the last time I I hit. Were they? Yeah. All right, so let let me let me see here. Yeah. 
the rice. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. It doesn't go away after my turn, right? Okay. Um, it does. does. It only lasts until the end of your turn. Yeah, so you've lost it. Oh, well, then I guess yeah. I lost it. All right, then then, then her decision... Never mind. Is, if she's not frosted, she just walks up to you and she tentacles you to the face. I don't think she does, though. Bloop. She misses. No, that's good. Your AC is 18. No. <laughs> and then she attempts to tentacle you a second time, huh? Missing you again. <laughs> yeah? Come Let's on, see. lady! Roll 1d6. She tries to recover her psychic shriek. She does. This Melkart up to the north opens her mouth and psychic shrieks in your direction. Please roll a DC 15 intelligence saving throw. Damn. <sighs> You take 23 damage, and you are stunned. Doesn't he take half, because it's a, it's a cone? Uh, he can choose to use his evasion to take half, but uh, it's, it's the, wait, 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 wait. So he's got Back. two skills. He's got dodge and evasion. Mm -hmm. And let's double check what this is because he might be able to cut the damage in half. I would have to take dexterity saving throw. Thinking about the other ability. Well, that's there's, evasion. There's, something... there's one that affects AOE and that's the one I'm talking about. So uncanny dodge, when an attacker that you see hits you with an attack, you can use a reaction to have the attack's damage against you. So you could use your attack I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it if it's like gonna kill me. Oh no no no! It's I. I was thinking of evasion. Yeah. yeah, and that's only dexterity saving throws. Okay, so you're stunned, uh, Sarek. It's your turn. Make an intelligence save. You succeed. You're no longer stunned. Uh, blood of the lamb comes flying over. Uh, and bites at you. As as it does so, he says. Bites. <laughs> Misses. Melkart attacks you with her tentacles. Let's do it again. Ah, oh, but hitting you. Please, you are first. You are grappled, and the second, uh, you must make a DC fifteen intelligence save. All right, I'm gonna use my um. And you take twenty one seconds. I'm gonna use my uncanny dodge to have that. Okay. Cool. Yep. I assume, what is 21? Take, is that 10 or 11? You take 10, 10, 10 damage. Great. And then what is the thing I have to roll? DC 15 intelligence save. <laughs> okay, you're stunned. One. Well, you all know what comes next. Melkart opens her brain and tentacles with eyes extrude out. And she auger of Atticuses you with advantage. Hitting you. Dealing you 68 piercing damage. Opens her brain is a phrase I never thought I'd, I'd hear. Yeah. Well, I'm super dead, so. And pulls your brain out of your skull. Well, thank God no one saw that. So, <laughs> feeling pretty all right. You don't have a prodigy track for this? Use it all for your you, dodges? I got nothing. You hear the sound of gentle breezes rustling through foliage. When you open your eyes, the soft grasses of the moon buoy you. And Saloon looks down at you and says, That must have hurt. You don't know the half of it. Uh. <laughs> Well fought. Close. You were very close, closer than I expected you to get after last session's oh. uh, end. Well done. Why didn't she greet us like normally, Stephen? What's going on here? I don't know what you're talking about. Why didn't she greet us like normally, Stephen? So good to see you. Why didn't she say so good to see you? 
Hmm? She says, oh. My apologies. It's so good to see you. Is it, though? Is Always. it, Saloon? Mm. Always. Something's off. Something's wrong here. I'm telling you, her brain is cotton candy. That's not me being rude. That's just me letting you know what I saw. There was nothing in there. Just cheers, 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 cheers. Aya, uh, Marshmallow comes flying over from the tree where he was hanging out with uh, Maine mm. and says, Welcome! It's so good to see you! You know what, Marshmallow? At this point in time, even if given the option to trade you for that other really cool fire-breathing blood raven, I still choose you. Marshmallow just, like, curls up next to you on your shoulder, like in the little hollow of your of your collarbone, and just goes, I'd choose you, too. I know. The way you curved Kairos back there, even though he's nicer to you than I am, really just sealed it for me, you know? I realized you have loyalty, and that's rare these days. I'm really sorry. Uh, that looked like it hurt. <clears throat> it smelled like barbecue when you, when, you know, you popped. Felt bad for you. Barbecue is delicious. <laughs> barbecue. <laughs> barbecue. <laughs> ba barbecue. Barbecue. What's, what's wrong with barbecue? <sighs> Have y'all ever had snake? Never mind. I'm not off topic. <clears throat> So I, I, I do see a question in chat that popped up a couple of times, like, why didn't the clones get hit by the AoE? Chat, just so you know, this is some DM bullshit, but the justification is that they're like illusory clones that Saloon is controlling, and so when she casts damaging Saloon spells, she can... What's that? That Saloon is controlling? Sorry. <laughs> Wait, then Melkart... <laughs> that Melkart is controlling? And so, like, you know, when she casts her own spells, she just chooses not to have her illusions affected by You're her. Feeding the con you're actively feeding the conspiracy theories <laughs> that the whole thing existence. I enjoy seeing the fan theories that come out of all of this. About to call Coast to Coast AM on your ass. Be like, <laughs> I've heard a thing, George. So, um... <laughs> Saloon Colin with Art Bell would be amazing. <laughs> with her saying, that just saying. Looks like it hurt, and then saying, you know, Saloon's controlling them. Um, Leander comes tottering over to you, uh, and, and he looks a little bit embarrassed. So he, he, he walks up to Aya and he says, Yes, well, uh, <clears throat> sorry about it. all of that. You know how it can be sometimes. Uh, here, I have this for you. And he hands you a sheet of paper, Aya. I take the what? sheet of paper, but I also say, uh, playing both sides, having your fun like you usually do. Um, he looks a little bit uncomfortable, uh, like genuinely. Um, he says, normally, yes, but not, in fact, in this case. Uh, well, let's just say I haven't always approved of everything that you have done. And, well, one doesn't get to pick and choose when one is a patron. Anyway, here, this is, this is for you. Here. I take the paper, but I'm also like, did you lose control of one of your warlocks? I just, you should read that. It's very important. It's very interesting. Much I more interesting it. than this conversation. And then he just yeah, I read it, but I'm also like, well, I'll continue this later. Here it is. What is the death's head? Do you guys want me to read this, or does anyone else want to do it, or should I do it? You do, do it. it. You have the paper. You're the professional voice actor. <laughs> gods are strange things, you know. Without <laughs> power, gods are just monarchs, leaders, visionaries. This is some goop style, you know, thought changers. Trends thought leaders, yeah. yeah, thought leaders like the gods are influencers. The OG influencers, really, mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. belief, gods are just sorcerers, dragons, exoplanar entities. Without followers, gods are just well, patrons come to mind, don't they? It's a rare thing that an entity achieves apotheosis. I did a little field research into your question, and finding my days of book research are no longer efficient. 
The death's head you describe is the corpse of Ozzy Dehaka, the self-same corpse you describe traversing through when first entering the palace complex. As near as I can understand, when you slew the broken avatar of Dehaka, you were able to take his soul rather than having it return to his body. And I believe you subsequently destroyed it. That's a topic for another time. No, I think it's missing two spoonfuls, but in our bag. Or you, no, uh, I smothered it on the other one. Yeah. You, you, you pushed it into the mm -hmm. corpse. The old of... head. And I still don't know what that is. Okay. Without his soul, the Haka went silent, leading to a crisis of faith in his followers, who, following a demagogue, swiftly abandoned their god to despair. In his corpus's weakened state, it was no trouble for Glowick, with help from the Arcanomancer, to skewer the realms and bring the god's dying body to this world. It seems he was harvesting something from the deity's forehead, the ichor you report finding. I'm not certain what for, but at the end of the day, Glowick is dead, and definitively, so is Azzy Dehaka. We killed a god! That might not be a good thing, but we did, which is kind of cool. Wisdom is a dump stat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Kill god. Were we not supposed to do that? No, it's D&D. &D. You're always supposed to kill a god. Oh, okay. Because it seems like maybe all of the chicanery and craziness that was happening with the Haka worshippers, maybe we kind of started that? No, 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 no. I don't think we had anything to do with that, actually. We set we them free. That doesn't, sound like us. that doesn't sound like us. We set them free, Aya. They're like killing themselves and putting themselves into flesh golems and stuff like that now because they just like we took any reason they had. But to it's live. their choice, not because a god told them to. That's Freedom. true. Free will is. Free will to turn yourself into a golem creature. Yeah. Yeah. I say we're doing good things here. We need to figure out what they're doing with this ichor. Because because without his soul, he was dying. It was easy for him to be brought here. They skewered the realms and brought him here just to mine ichor from his forehead. What are, like what? Why? Why would they need God ichor? Uh, unfortunately, even though we, you know we set them free, Sarek. We also actively helped the Arcanomancer and Glowick because we made it easy for them to bring his corpse down here and start mining it, whereas if he had a soul, it would have been really hard to do that. Right. Well, we could ask them, but we killed them, so... Whoops. I'm not sure the Arcanomancer is dead. Because, like, we saved giant space whale from the, from the Arcanomancer, but unfortunately delivered another deity right into her hands, so she still got what she was after. God blood. Wait, but does that also mean d giant space whale is a god? Well, it, it, uh, the top of the letter explained what a god is to these people. True. He could just be a giant whale that people think is a god. Right, maybe, maybe like giant things or like extra planar entities have like good bits inside them that are like extra tasty. You know, a fish head's a common delicacy in my home. It's true. It looks terrible, ugly thing, but delicious. The little huh. bits in there with the cheeks and the whatnots. Oh. Delicious. All right. I mean, well. I've had the cheeks, but not the eyes and stuff. So. Oh, that's the best part. You go, oh, it's delicious. If you're port town like us, it's a it's a common thing. Hmm. Delicious. I have an idea. It may not be good. But what about the dragon of the woods, Belsirathoth? I believe at some point it was also worshipped as an ancient god. And it might be the only thing we have close to being a god that's no longer a god. And so maybe we could ask it. Maybe it has some insights about being what a god. What blood and could be used for? Yeah, and like what, what the ichor could be. 
I also just realized, Steven, out of character but also in character, we have a place to respec. Right? That old dead head. True. Yeah. I, w what? I would like to respec. Doesn't that mean... Doesn't that mean I could change from uh, a pact of the great old one to a pact of the celestial and have the space well be my patron? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lovely idea. I can't possibly go wrong. I mean, yes, my brain explodes every time I call him. <laughs> Because Hello. his consciousness is so vast. The only time I've been inflicted with insanity in this game is just him picking up a phone and going, Hello. Do you, like, do you hear that sound? I still remember that fan art of my, my character. <laughs> like, Hello. Um, I mean... I guess we need to figure out I assume we will eventually, but like it seems the 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 play here is that we need to, like, based on what Eric was saying, do we need to be like prepared? I I don't. In our in my mind, I feel like we were like, yes, let's go to the castle, let's fight this guy, let's kill them, and then we'll see what happens. And now I'm worried that like the we'll see what happens part is like, you fools. You've done exactly what I... Like, I'm really worried that we're, like, way off track here. And I... I mean... I'm just putting it out there. I'll say it again. Is it time for us to wrap up all these side quests? We have plenty, and I feel like they'll lead us to things. We should probably do some of them, at least. Yeah. We got which a bunch. One you, which one do you have your eye on? I mean, I, I am a gamer who plays in quadrants, right? So... In my mind, I'm like, okay, did we do everything in the, like, lower city? Did we do everything in the forest? Did we do everything in the, like, the the place where all the servitude? Did we do everything? Like, did we do everything in those areas? So now I'm thinking, like, did we do everything in the woods? And I know for a fact there's at least three things in the woods we haven't done. Yeah. Plus, we can go back and talk to that dragon. So I feel like if we can just, like, chunk the things we have to do then we'll be more prepared for like, you know, knowing things. And we can also be like, all right, mm -hmm. we got this fucking thing we got to do. We got this thing we got to do. But also, I don't know. It could be like, Stephen just shows up and is like, you have two days until the fifth turning of the fourth umbral cycle. And I'll be like, I don't even know what that means. And I'll be like, you must hurry. <laughs> then we'll be back in some damn coliseum fighting space dragons again. I'm just saying, I have no clue. No clue. Also, couldn't we just... Could we go back into the... I guess we can't because it's sealed. But, like, could we go back to the Coliseum and, like, try to get back into the, the void world the, the of song and gold? Yes. Golden songs? We didn't destroy the portal. It's still there. I mean, I, mean yeah. I didn't take it as a spell, but there was a moment there where I thought of being able... Like, Dimension Door is also a thing. Um... Which, I mean, there's like, there, we might get lucky if I had a spell icon for that. We could technically just open a door. Mm hmm. Just yeah. pop on I through mean, and just be there, which is insane to think about. Right. That we've gotten that high level in this game, that the possibility of just opening a door between dimensions and walking through is something that's within the realm of possibility. But I feel like, so we beat the the boss inside, and I feel like it pushed us out. I don't know that it's still open, but I feel like we could open it, right? Yeah, no, I think we could. I think the boss pushing us out was just Steven helping us not die on the way out because there was a very good likelihood we would have. I think it was just Steven giving us a bagel instead of a steak knife. Because getting there was hard. There was those weird clouds, those slivers, yeah. the, the dudes that are on the marionettes, and then we had to, like, fly. And every once in a while, I'd be like, bong, and we'd all be like, and we'd have to keep going. It yeah. was just such an insane area to get through. That I yeah. yeah, I wonder what, like, you know, there was a bunch of different areas. We still have to go to deal with our poor skeleton girlfriend. 
There's just a lot, a lot to do. And I wonder like what the outcome of that would be. Like, you know, I don't know that it gets us anything, but what happens if we like save her from her curse? I don't know. Save, wait, save who? Uh, our skeleton girlfriend. I think Melissa. Melissa. But how does going to Celestial Realm help her? No, I'm just saying it's all part of that, that uh, forest area. Like the forest yes. area, we have a bunch of shit to do in. And yes. I'm curious, like, you know, and I just think. the crone tell us something? I mean, maybe we could go back to her. Yeah, that's another thing we could do is like go back to the, we haven't been back to the crone in a while. You know, she's over there like, I know shit. <laughs> Right? Like, we just haven't been we back. We stole her bird, though, right? I mean, I didn't. You did steal her bird. Yeah. She's fine. The bird's better off. It's now part of a this mega bird. That's why you never steal from the shopkeepers in Zelda, because then they're like... But we had to. That's We got a bird up here. It's in a better place. It's, it's in a farm up moon. It's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think I think a solid thing is like we buy some stuff and we head to the forest and like do a do a like you know, like if you bring up the forest map, just be like grid by grid forest investigation. Just like do it. Just like we're doing this, we're clearing the map. That's what I would do at least. I'd be like, let's go. Map clearing time. Bring your weird uh like look at this. Look at this. This is what all we have of the forest. That's all we have. So much map left. Look at that. Who, I mean, you can see like some borders of things, but there's like other areas here that we can definitely check out. All I'm saying is, let's do it. Let's get and I'm in here there. For it. I'm here for it. We're so much stronger now. He's going to throw like, I'm a toad tentacle creature. And we'll be like, we also Dead. don't even know where Darth Kairos is. True. Mm. Also true. There's a likelihood we go in the woods and get gibleted there as well. I think the reason we were so fixated on getting that viewing lens is so we could complete the planar scope and then go to the clock world of Tixox Tix. And I want to very badly. I think I think very that was badly. literally it as we were like, we're going to the freaking clockwork world. And Iramon was like, get me that viewing lens. And I will take you there. And we were like, take us. Yeah, we had a whole, I don't know. Yeah, we like hit the part of the world where we finally got out of the tutorial. We were going to like, go to TikTok world. And do dances there. And then you got distracted. TikTok do we still dance. want to do that? Does that still rank high on our list of things we want to do? Yeah, it's just we have so much we want to do. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Need to choose. Uh, I mean, the quest list, as it states, is figure out a way to help Melissa, defeat the remaining beloved, help Rhetorial find his brother, Hender Stencha, question mark, question mark, question mark, map the <laughs> underground, it's two true. question marks, the housing scope, spires guarded by Milkart, second camp with the lesbians, and that's all that's there. And everything else is yeah. stricken out. Yeah. So. Let's just go down Constant the list. She, actually, I just realized we know where Darth Kairos is. He's the right-hand man of Astaphon. We have a note on that. A companion of the beloved mm. who pursued them after they journeyed to the palace. Little is known of this holy warrior, but that Astaphon keeps him closest of all. My greatest research was unable to discover records of his existence prior to his appearance in the palace. Most unusual. That's going to be the dude that heals Astaphon. Like, I feel like Ky Darth Kairos is going to be like the biggest dickheadishness of it all. Being like a paladin, he's going to be like, oh, oh yeah. you killed the boss? He comes oh, back easy. to life. And we're going to be like, this motherfucker. <gasps> oh, is it like white man? Oh, my God. I bet you he's going to do that. I bet you he's going to be like, heal. My champion. Heal. <laughs> Lay on hands. Arise. And heal. And we're going to be like, stop healing him. Stop it. Never. <laughs> and Never. then that ability that Eric always complains is useless. We're going to go to hit him and the shield's going to come up and be like, ching. You thought this was ability was useless. But I, Constantius, have made it the meta again. I, as a DM with my infinite bullshit, have infinite reactions. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's just DM yep. bullshit because the magic that he uses gives him infinite reactions. So. Oh my god, y'all. So. We're late in our episode today. I'd like to call your attention to Deether's experiments and the Forge Slag, which I invite all of you to read as we give our sign-offs for today. Let everybody go on about their lives. I would In anticipation of next week's fantastic exploration of the forests. What the what? Okay. Helen Iyer. That uh, plus one bonus to intelligence saving throws is pretty swell. That's pretty, it's pretty swell is what that is. Basically, how much can we give to Kairos? Like, uh, out of all these things, how much can we just give to you? Animated Shield you, sounds sick. Keep you alive. Animated Shield would be really cool. Can we do it? Do we have 100 no. Arcane Flux? Have 25 Arcane Flux right yeah. now. Yeah. We don't have enough to buy anything except for the Flex wand farming. of wand of magic missile, though. Wand, that's that's some value, because yeah. each of those missiles can hit the illusion automatically. Ah, Stephen. Huh? Resurrection of celestials, human resurrection, diamond, condensed spiritual energy. What could create enough condensed spiritual energy to resurrect a god? Icker, bitch. <laughs> I love that you're doing this. Wait, but question, Bronze. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So they're gonna take the they're gonna take the the goop out of a god. It's not goop though. It's like it's like crystalline almost, right, isn't it? Right, but yeah. but they're gonna take it out of out of one god, but it's their god. Weren't they like No. No, the Arcanomancer is her own thing for the most part. Right, but and I'm I feel talking... like is it her goal to make the Necro Sun? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sun's going to fucking die, okay? So what we're going to do is, like, we're going to kill this whale man, take his ichor, and, like, resurrect the sun as, like, a necro sun, and then cool goth sun time. Sure, but why were the cultists doing it? The cultists... Or I guess the people in the church. They were, like, using it to turn people into monsters, right? No. Isn't that what he just said in that last letter? That they were, like... They, the place that we went through, the body that we went through, the guys that were down in there, they were like grabbing goop. And that's no, the same no, goop. Wasn't that, that the same the goop? The Arcanomancer and that Glowick were, basically took advantage of the situation and bent the cultists to their will. Right, but they were still, yeah. but they were, but they were still using like, correct me if I'm wrong, Stephen, they were using the, like the stuff from the corpse. I think you saw Archbishop Glowick come out and he had one of those like globules of ichor. In his hands, yeah. in order to turn the cultists into a you know a broken avatar. Broken That's why they were all in the line because they're all getting avatared, and isn't that? And so uh, my question is, why was he doing that? Like, what was the purpose of that? I don't know. Yeah. So, also weirdly enough, like Icar is the correct term. It's like the actual authentic definition of Icar. Yep, the blood and of God's a god. Which you don't hear every day. Sorry. Oh, I have nothing else to contribute other than what anthropological. If, what if they're both shit. in on it, right? Because the spear at the head with the cultists, they're like, they're working with the Arcanomancer. The Arcanomancer, they were also, the cultists were also talking about her coming and going or whatever. So, what if they're both mining the Icar and he's using it to create these broken avatars? And maybe she's distilling it into something. To create a gem powerful enough for Necrosun. Well, that's... And I would agree with you. What doesn't make sense to me is why they would harvest it and then immediately give it away to, like, cultists. Like, if they're collecting it, why not just collect it? Is it because it wasn't from... It was from a different, like, source? I don't know. I don't well. know either. I have all the answers jesse i'm just starting to piece it together i know that's why i'm asking the questions <laughs> the plate of thoughts we, we should probably buy the plate of thought regardless so the next 
we can just hang on to it and only use it when we're ready to do that fight. Sure. That that needs to be used. I'll draw a red line through it. Yeah. And uh, Kairos, you can put it on your character sheet. Okay. And then we can uh, we can update that whenever. So that was that was four uh, arcane flux, and uh, that brings your total down to twenty one currently. Yeah, chat saying Quintara died, but I don't know if y'all remember when you died over there, your thread got cut and you just mm -hmm. got pulled up. And in his infinite DM bullshittery, I believe Steven said Quintara's dying words were like, this is not the end, or something like that, which is ominous as hell. Something extremely DM bullshit. True. We definitely should take the Wand of Magic Missile, just because if we yeah. leave, this stuff is going to vanish, so we might as well take so, it. Okay, hold up. I might take it, because I, I was the one who kept complaining about us not having Magic Missile. <laughs> um, wand of Magic Missile does not require attunement, interestingly enough. Well, I um, used up my other one, and that the, the Wand of Counterspell, I wish we had another oh. Wand of Counterspell. That saved us. So you still have the Wand of Counterspell. In fact, it regains charges on the moon. So let me double check this. So now that you're back on the moon, um, it regains 1d4 plus 1 charges. I'll roll that for you. Oh. You so it regained oh, yeah. 5 charges, which means it's back up to 5 full charges. So you have nice. 5 charges. And, you want and so charge. Wand of Magic Missile is the same way, right? You can use yep. it, but if you use the last charge, it disappears. Yep. Interesting. Um... I love all of this. Do you, does someone have 500 gold and a 100 gold piece gem to let us just complete this interaction right yep. now? I do. Okay, let's strike that off and I'll strike a line through the one. You wand said uh, what, what gem? Uh, 100, 100 gold. 100? Yeah, I just yeah. want to make sure. Thanks. Um, and uh, Britt, you can put the wand of magic missile on your character sheet. And. Um, that's all we have time for today, and I want to make sure to let you all get off to your next things. So, Jesse, I'll let you send us around the table. But I love right. the connection that you're starting to draw. Y'all are driving me crazy. Uh, I okay. also think at some point we should pick up the crescent necklace for Brit. Um, re remember, of course, that um, Deether can craft magic items. So if you know of an item that you want, he can just make it for you. So if you're like, hey, I want those boots of, of flying, you can just give him the materials and he'll make it. Because that, that necklace would restore half your spell slots or one use of wild shape, which would be good in situations mm. like this last one where you ran out of wild shapes. Is the crystal of refreshing now not applicable because we left and came back? Is that one that disappears? I mean, yeah, I lost my moon shards as well. Like once yeah, we, we if we die, we just okay. yeah, we're screwed. Oh, yeah. I believe that the crystal of refreshing does not go away. Okay, cool. Um, it's it's so expensive. It like costs arcane flux. It would feel shitty to like take it from you. But yes, moon shards do disappear. Cool. Thank you. All right. All right. Well... I've got the magic missile wand. Awesome. And okay. We have, we have one aquamarine left worth 500. We have one jade left worth 100. And we have one diamond left worth 1,000. That diamond, can we give it to Kairos? Sure. Because, right, cause then he can use that I to resurrect. Go yeah. ahead. It's a 1,000 gold diamond. It's yours now. It's out of my, out of my thing. Mm -hmm. Gee, thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. I will add it. <clears throat> All right. Is there anything else before we uh, wrap this up? Anything? Should we buy our our uh, main stuff now, Stephen, or wait? We should probably wait. I think we should wait because we should wait until next week. When we get back next week, we should decide which thing we're going to do. We should commit to doing it, and then we should buy whatever applies to that decision. Yeah. God, if we were smart, I'd just be like, chat, vote. That's so much easier. No. What? Mm -hmm. If we're like, vote no. on our fate. Chat, chat. This episode only. Oh. Vote on our fate. That'd be a great one. Think about it. Anyway, uh, all right. Britt, what's going on with you this week? 
I'm just working on my, I'm doing two charity shows at the end of May and beginning of June. So I'm just working on my charity shows and hanging out with my dog. I don't know. Just trying to get back into normal life things and also not be stressed. So I'm just, just living. I hope everyone has a good weekend. Awesome. Steven, besides kicking us all off of here so you can go play Returnal, what are you up to? I'm trying to convince my cat not to toss everything to the floor. And um, that's all. Next episode of Pond and Prince <laughs> will not be this weekend, but rather the following weekend on uh, May 15th. And other than that, I'll see you all next Wednesday. Uh, but, like... I love the connections that y'all are starting to draw between things because it's really exciting for me. I'm excited to check a bunch of stuff off our list. I feel yeah. like I'm it, wrong, Steven. I feel like every single time I'm like, I am an idiot, and Steven's sitting there like, this bronze girl. That bronze no. girl. You're doing it right. This bronze girl. Bronze, bronze. you're... You're playing this perfectly, and if there's any failure, it's a failure in the in the information delivery from the level designer. Right, right. exactly, <laughs> exactly. So. You're right. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Bronze, what's going on? What's going on with you? Oh, yesterday we had a uh, session eight. I can't believe it's already been eight weeks of uh, right? my D&D 5th edition campaign. Um yeah, Shakar. I love it a lot. I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's been fun to have, like, you know, just explore that. And, uh, yeah, so super excited for that. Um, because of the, the the getting it uploaded to YouTube, I have a YouTube partnership. So thank you to everyone nice. that has watched it and supported Yay. it. The rebroadcasts are 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Sundays, and it hits YouTube on Mondays. Um, yeah, we have a really great uh, cast and a really great story that's unfolding. Um, today I'm going to be in a game for Jasper's game day and, um, oh yeah, my new character went live on GTA RP. Oh boy. Uh, her, she yes. Judge, her name is Judge Katarina King. I am on the squad RP server, TSRP, and, uh, an attempt was made on my life, but I'm probably going to be editing down a very dramatic Indian soap opera style, like, you know, with the super close-ups. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because it was very dramatic. And I have a son in that game, played by Gabe. And uh, yeah, some some Dawn figure tried to murder the judge of the town. And so things got really heated. Uh, the server's only live on the weekend, so I'm looking forward to playing that as well as Resident Evil this weekend. And I'm totally not re-addicted to League of Legends. That is all. I'm so sorry. Eric, what's going on with you? Hopefully hey, not League. Uh, no, no League of Legends for me. Uh, last uh, Monday was episode 60 of my Pendragon campaign, um, which is a long time nice. running a game. Um, but it's it's continuing to go and continue to grow. Never played a game like it. It's amazing. Um, I did the math with my friends, and based on our pace, we're going to have to have about 200 episodes before we're done uh, with the great Pendragon campaign. So, Anyone can do it, it's you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I told them uh, going into it, I was like, you know, this is what it is. They know what the game is. They know how long it's going to play, and they committed to it. And so hopefully we all are, you know, we're on the same page there, and we're invested in it for, you know. And so that's, I, 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 I know, I can't believe we're already that far along in it. But anyways, I'm doing that. And also now on my weekends on Sunday, I'm part of the Last Ditch, which is a Roll For It's channel's uh, only war show for 40K. Uh, so it's, it's a, that's been really fun, and I love playing with everyone over there. Um, so that's, that's been a fun little treat. Um, I never really played Only War, and also, like, uh, the GM for that is a guy that, like, was around right when I was getting, like, started streaming and things like that, but we just always were ships passing the night, so I was finally had a chance to talk to the, the, to the guy, and that's really fun. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, nice to, it's nice to finally, like, meet new people that also love games as much as I do, right? And are, are good people. That's me. What are you doing, Jesse? Thanks for asking. Ah, today's going to be good. Uh, if you liked this battle and watching us get slaughtered, um, hey, later today, in three and a half hours, uh -oh. the Goblins of Io, that's right, Goblins have teamed up with Wizards from another campaign to fight a god. I imagine we'll be dead. 
I don't know how I don't know how we'll live. So if you want to see uh, a bunch of goblins actually hide behind wizards and try to kill the wizards killed, you should definitely later today check out uh, twitch.tv slash Brett Ultimus for the Goblins of Io. And you can watch myself and Crendor and Tomato and uh, Bree and all of us goobers, Benji, uh, all of us uh, die. I assume we're going to die today. So it should be totally fun. Don't fight a god if you're a level 8 goblin. I guess is I guess this is the lesson we'll all learn. So, yeah, that'll be a treat. But that's it for us. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, hey, you should tune in next time because I'm, I'm not joking. I'm going to, even if they don't agree to it, I'm definitely going to be like, chat, what should we do? And then I'll push for it, guys. I'll push for it. I'll be like, I, you know what? I'm starting to really think that we should go do this Melissa thing. And they'll be like, you're just doing that because chat said Jesse. And I'll be like, no, no, no. not me. <laughs> no. Wink. It'll be between us, not chat. not that kind of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be between us, chat. Wink. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it for us. We'll see you all next time. Have an excellent day. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed that episode. I know Bronze did because she got everything she wanted. And uh, now I, I'm sure everything outside the dome is fine. I'm curious if Steven will remember this moment for whenever this ends and wraps up, if that will play a role. I'm very excited. Uh, we'll see.